What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, just wanted to go over my infield routine, talk about uh, some of the principles in infielding, some of the things I've learned from the great Ron Washington, some things I've learned from my man Jonathan Moda. Uh, overall, just trying to impart some wisdom, some things that have helped me and continue to help me become a better fielder. So looking forward to it. We'll just go through a little bit of my routine, uh, talk through some things and, you know, kind of advice I'd give and that I do give to kids I work with. So let's get going. So we always start early in the day. First thing we do, uh, we just we get on our knees just to do uh, isolate our hands. Uh, we always start in the middle, do seven in the middle, do seven forehands, seven backhands, and then we mix it up a little bit uh, before we move on to the pad. But the sole purpose of this, like I said, is to get timing and rhythm with our hands, how to catch a short hop. Uh, the easiest way I like to explain it to kids, and we'll demonstrate it here in a minute, is there's a rhythm to moving through a short hop. Uh, two things I see are kids move too early, and the other thing is they move with a lo uh, loose wrist. Uh, we, we actually were talking about that today. The loose wrist uh, can just cause a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, so I like to talk about kind of, if you had a brace on your arm uh, to move with a stiff wrist so that the pocket is able to stay on plane with the ground ball as opposed to moving off of it. It's just like hitting. If your barrel's in and out of the zone, then you're going to have a hard time hitting a lot of line drives. So, you know, I like to keep my pocket moving on the same plane at all times. Backhands, I never, I don't like to bend my wrist over or do this. I keep it moving on the same line. Do the same thing with forehands and obviously the same thing with two. So, get into a little bit of a demonstration um, just to kind of go over the rhythm, uh, when to move with the hop and I'll see how I do it, so. So the biggest thing, like I said, with the hop is I want to make my forward move as the ball's hitting the ground. That, it, it creates a rhythm, it creates margin for error. So as soon as the ball's going to hit in front of me, that's when I make my forward move. Um, I, I just think it creates a better timing and it allows you to kind of pick your hop a little bit better. Uh, it's one thing that kind of Wash implemented was there's a rhythm to it. And once you kind of get the rhythm here, you can then take it out, obviously, when you're doing full on fungus. And then one thing to like keep in mind is you want to line up the ball with the glove to your eye. Mm -hmm. OK, always keeping that line. You're never going to be here. It's almost. Yeah, you want to you want to be able to almost have a direct line from my eyes down through my pocket, which is going to work in line with a ground ball. So many times like, just like hitting, like you're not gonna run away from the ball. You're gonna stay through the ball. It's the same with fielding. I'm gonna stay through everything with eyes um, and glove. And that way, even if you get an in-between hop, if he throws one out there and I make the move as it's hitting, even if it's gonna bounce up and I'm making my move on time, I'm still able to create depth no, with my yep. pocket which there are going to be times in a game where you do get an in-between hop. And if you're making the right moves, you're giving yourself a better chance. Whereas if you, you know, I see a lot of guys in between hops, they get real defensive. That's honestly probably the worst thing you can do. You just want to continue to play through the baseball. Through the ball, yes. Yeah. Yep. Playing through the ball is, is about as key as it gets, especially when you're isolating, uh, you know, in our drill work. Sturdy pocket and be able to actually press through the ball. Um, Let's see, it's just like the four it's the same principle. You're just flipping the glove over. And one thing, one thing that Dansby do, does really well is when he, when he gets a in-between hob, his footwork, it's so, it now is going to take over. Because for him, doing this move, aligning the ball to his eye, to the glove, um, he's so good at now, I'm going to catch that hop with my feet. Um, that's one thing like these guys are like gold glovers. They do um, everything with a purpose and that purpose starts here. And then when he transitioned over there, now muscle memory uh, becomes uh, pro like it takes over. Now he's just playing the ball with his footwork. Correct. So moving on to backhand.
couple more. And they always finish with just a middle, a forehand, a backhand, and then back to a forehand, or uh, in between. Move to a pad. And this just, I mean, this forces you to actually press through the ball press because the there's ball. no other way to catch it uh, with a flat pad. Uh, we'll do five straight on, and then we'll move our feet just a little bit to start implementing our legs a little bit more. The important thing to note too about fielding is the game's played out front, right? Just like hitting, game's played out front. And the more we allow the ball to dictate what we're doing here, we're giving ourselves a worse chance to be able to catch the baseball. So in everything that we do, we focus so much on moving through the ball. Obviously we're not doing like a full on fungo right now, which we'll get to in a minute. But the idea is that everything that I do is to press through the baseball, which then when you get into the game, it's a, you know, obviously you're gonna be pressing through to move to wherever you're throwing. So now we're gonna move a little bit. One thing to think about is this sound, the sound of the pet. Um, it's not a rattle. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, if you guys look at this, it shows you where the focus, the dance we put on, mm -hmm. it's right, right on the middle, right here in the middle, okay? That's where um, uh, Wash talks about there's there's a rhythm, there's a sound. Mm -hmm. um, you'll hear it's like background pad, background pad, and it just, you'll feel the rhythm. There's never a, like a background double pad because it's, yeah. it's rattling, uh, which I think a lot of that comes with, like I said, hitting is rhythm and timing, so is fielding. fielding. This is where we start to move into it. Like I said, we, there's a progression, right? We start on our knees, isolate our hands. We, we move to the pad to be able to feel our hands working out front. And then now we get into a bunch of different positions that we'll be in, uh, in the game. There'll be some backhands, some forehands, a different kind of forehand, and then we'll play things a little bit more straight up. But you notice like every time I press through a ball too, my pocket and glove is moving towards uh, Mo. It's never around, it's never through this way. It, the pocket is always pressing on this continuous line uh, through every drill and every rep that we're doing. If this ball comes out of Dan Spee's um, glove. If I were to miss it, yeah, which I do from time to time. <laughs> it happens, right? Um, he's still gonna have a chance because pressing through it, where the like mm -hmm. the, the the hop is coming, he's trying to kill the hop. It's gonna stay in front of him. It's gonna give him. A, it's gonna a, give me a chance. A chance to still get that runner. It's also a direct feedback too. Is if I'm missing a ball and it's going that way, that means that I'm not pressing through the ball. But if I'm pressing through it correctly, if I were to miss, it'd be moving back towards Mo. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the tough one right out, of, right out of the gate. Yeah, that shows how good he is. <laughs> I said, and I can't emphasize enough, when you are pressing through the baseball, as the ball's about to hit the ground, that's when you're making your move forward. And that's what creates the rhythm, it creates timing, it creates margin for error. We talk about, we talk about um, coming up as the ball, or coming down, and then the ball is coming up, you want to stay through that line. Like I said, and that's where if you get the in-between and it bounces there and I'm still making my move, I'm still in a spot to catch it as opposed to if I'm flipping through or if I'm early, it's going right under me. Cut that one. Don't make Mo look bad on the fungo. <laughs> Watch is going to look at this like, still have a long ways to go, son. Yeah. I'm good, but I ain't perfect. That's I ain't I perfect. Says. So that's pretty much done. I would say of the 162 games we played, that's probably done 130, 140 times. Um, it's a quick routine. It's simple. It's easy. It's not going to burn your legs. It's not going to crush you, but it's really going to get you ready to play. So when you move back to you know, when we're going to go do a few ground balls here in a minute. 
it, all that matters now is I've already prepped my hands. Now when I go out there, all that matters is gonna be my footwork, footwork. which as long as I'm keeping them moving, and as long as I'm moving them in the direction that I wanna throw, then we're in a good spot. Yep. All right, so now that we did uh, shore ops, like I said, we're gonna move back to a little bit more of like a three quarter fungo. The biggest points of emphasis that I put when I do my work is two things. Number one, I want to make sure that after I get done working, that my footwork and my work that I can tell because it's, we have a, a dirt field is I want everything to be in a V, okay? I wanna make sure that my angles are sharp, precise and intentional I don't want side to side. Side to side leads to the ball playing you. Mm -hmm. A V leads to the ball, leads to you playing the ball. Um, so, you know, if that's a backhand, I'm able to still work through the ball to redirect to throw to first base, or which this one's a little bit more challenging for me and we work on a ton, is the glove, because immediately you want to go this side, but when you flatten out, the ball's starting to play you as opposed to making your first move in this direction to where I can play the ball and then be able to throw to first base. So, so when he hits this backhand, well, hit me another backhand. I'm wanting to make sure I'm taking a good sharp angle to be able to press through the ball and then my feet will be able to redirect to First base. Now forehand, same thing. This one's a little bit more challenging for me. My tempo and pace is something I have to constantly work on. That's a perfect simple right there of that ball. It's it give a really top hop hop at the end, and it's perfect a simple of playing through the ball. Playing with stiff wrists, allowing Dansby the opportunity to see it still coming up as the ball. Um, it's about to like give him that really tough hop. Very nice. A couple more, and I'm gonna explain something real quick. So, let's say if you look at my work, which I'm gonna get Mason to go out there and show you, but everything I do is in a V. You can see all the angles, all the attacking angles are moving forward. Um, if, if someone were to say, hey, Dansby, what are two things that I can do to be a better fielder, develop my game defensively? The number one thing I challenge kids with doesn't matter what age, as I always say, how many great plays do you see with two hands? The answer is zero, okay? The best way to catch a ground ball is with one hand. You have more range, you have more length, watch. I get set up, I go to field a ground ball, this is as far as I can reach. I get set up in that same stance, and I go with one hand, I have about another, you know, 10 to 12 inches of coverage, which allows me to play hops that I want to more often. Catching ball two hands is never a bad thing, but I do think the emphasis and being able to be comfortable catching the ball with one hand is paramount in the game of baseball. It's a one-handed game. So the thing that I challenge young kids with is I say, okay, every fungo that we're gonna to take today, you have to catch it on the run with one hand. So whether that's me playing around a ball, whether that's me playing through a backhand on the run, even if the ball's hit right at me, so I wanna go attack this ball and then, okay, I gotta wait a second and then I can reshuffle to get the momentum that I want. Or if it's a forehand, playing through it on the run. Two things it does. Number one, it helps kids realize that you have to attack the baseball because it shortens your throw. Your throw isn't gonna be as long and you can get more people out consistently. The second thing that I would say is it puts kids and anyone really in an uncomfortable situation to where they have to learn how to catch the ball with one hand and until you're forced to do it, you're never gonna do it. But if you wanna be a great fielder, you have to learn how to play the ball with one hand. Absolutely. You got anything? Yeah, absolutely. Um, going to your backhand or your forehand, 
thinking about catching the ball with two hands is going to limit your range as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it's going to be tough to create those angles that Densby uh, that we focus on uh, on a daily basis here. So definitely be free mm -hmm. with one hand. Yep. One hand. The great ones filled with one filled hand. Filled with one hand. So obviously, like we were talking about, I wanted you guys to be able to see this work. So clearly, this is my starting point, right? And if you look at my work, whether it's a backhand or a forehand, I'm working in this kind of angle, right? There's not anything, you know, on this outfield grass line uh, where the cutout is. Everything is intentional to come get the baseball, shorten my throw, and create a good angle towards first base. Now, this next part, I just want to demonstrate. We talked about catching the ball with one hand, new glove, a little stiff, so I might miss a couple. But playing the ball on the run, uh, catching with one hand and just kind of what that looks like because I think it's so important to be able to have a visual with obviously what I'm saying. The whole point is to just attack the ball. Get comfortable attacking the ball and catching it with one hand. This also helps you learn how to create the hop you want. See, even that one's hit a little bit harder, but with the intention of going to get in the ball, I can always stop. It's hard, it's really hard to restart. So the intention from the get-go has to be to start. And then now I've shortened my throw by 25, 30 feet. Helps me make plays more consistently. And the one thing I always say is, you know, coaches will probably give me some backlash for this. The point of doing this is to catch the ball, right? We talk about all the time, get, get in front, get in front. Getting in front doesn't always equate to making plays. However, when you attack the ball and you play the right hop, you're gonna make more plays. So do I wanna get out? Yes, what's the best way to get out? Play the ball, attack the ball, and usually let's catch the ball with one hand. Either way. Missed it. Let me try and run through this one a little bit better. The other thing I like about this is just like the mental part of challenging myself, right? Like this is hard. It's not easy, puts you in uncomfortable situations, but guess what? If you want to be a great player, you got to learn how to deal with being uncomfortable. Very nice. I right, will do one more. One more, Mo. There you have it. Easy day of work.